The Culture Show is brought to you by Highway 55 Burgers, Shakes, and Fries. The Professional Fence Company. Our name says it all. No job too big or too small. Nunboys.com. In GPS Photography and Video, GPS Photo and Video.com. Welcome back to the Coaches Show. I'm Glenn Young alongside Coach Paris. And Coach, a few more questions um, as it relates to talent. And I guess people were asking about the offense. Are we going to go back to the spread? When I guess when they were saying we're in the spread, but I guess with the holding up of the signs uh, and things like that, is there anything, any tweaks that we're going to do to the offense? Uh, you know, we're running the exact same offense we did a year ago. Right. Um, there's absolutely no difference. We're running the same plays, same passing concepts. Um, the signs, we, we tried to simplify it a little bit and, and eliminate uh, the signs, and we signal everything in now. I, I have really even huddled up as well. Yeah, yeah. We, we've experimented with huddling, and we're we're you know we're contemplating with going back to the huddle. Um, right. But it, I don't know that um, you know offensively whether or not we evolve. We'll determine. I'll determine that at the end of the season as far as uh, whether or not we'll evolve next season. I've, I've, I've begun contemplating that, looking at what we've got coming up, and um, actually uh, began conversations relative to that next year. I have not decided um, if, we, if we are going to stay in this offense. Uh, we're going to have to really do some aggressive developmental things, especially at quarterback. The talent dictates what you can do. Right, no doubt about it. And if we do, if we do change, uh, if we change our offense at all, we're going to be basically in the same boat with having to uh, work on aggressive development mm -hmm. because uh, you know there's no two offenses are the same. No. And um, I think um, you know we. I, I'd love to be you know a power sweep team and just line up and mash people, but until we get stronger. Uh, you know, we got to be a lot stronger than we are. Um, we're just we're not suited to that. Uh, you know, you look at you look at Power Sweet. Well, you look at Rocky Mount. Right. You know, they're they're a Power Sweet team out of the wing tee. You know, they, they play power football and and their their absolute strength superiority showed a little bit uh, last week. Right. And um, so we've still got work to do. We've got work to do in the weight room. We've got speed work to do, and we've got fundamental development work to do, but we do that every day. All of, all three things we do every day, and uh, and we're going to continue to do it. Well, it's good to have a bye week. Um, we end up playing a JV game on Monday mm -hmm. because of the weather delay and whatnot. But how have you utilized the bye week? We've slowed practice down a little bit, uh, working much more on fundamentals. Um, we do a lot. We a lot 30 minutes a day for fundamentals uh, anyway. And, and you know, this week we accelerated that a little bit, uh, added about 10 minutes, and spent more time doing fundamental work, just addressing the areas where we've got to continue to improve. And um, you know, we shortened our team periods. We didn't work on any. We haven't worked on any special teams. Uh, you know, we'll get back to that uh, tomorrow. In fact, but uh, you know, we've tried to shorten the day a little bit and slow it down a little bit so that we can concentrate on the things that we've got to concentrate on to be a good football team. You also start to receive those first progress reports. Always, of course, checking on the classroom as well. So that's got to help doing the bye week. Well, we we do our own. You you know, we do our own, and we do it every week. Right. And um, and it's it's not so much a progress report as much as it is an effort rating. Uh, we 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 ask uh, the teachers to evaluate our player personnel in, in four critical areas: uh, punctuality, behavior, uh, being prepared for class, and and you know what kind of leadership our kids are displaying in class. And um, we analyze those every week, and uh, you know we demand we, we want 110 percent out of everybody. That's what the, the percentage gradient maxes out at. But we demand a minimum of 81 percent, and um, you know, and, and our our thinking on that is uh, if a kid's effort uh, ratio in class is 81 percent or higher, 
is it's impossible for a kid to fail a class. Right. Uh, right. If a kid's uh, effort ratio is 110 percent, if if the kid's giving that teacher everything he can, then there's absolutely no way that kid should make a C. Right. Um, but you know, and it, and it equates very nicely to what we're doing in athletics because you know we talk about 110 percent all the time, giving 110 percent, you know, because that's that's what you got to do to win. But you know, we want our kids to understand it's the same way in the classroom. Right. We want them to win in the classroom. Well, coach, not to be it, but I, I think it's something special that's going on that everybody has noticed. Uh, I've called them the big uglies. I'm trying to find, make sure I got all their names. Jalen Fennell, number 63. Um, number 78, Dylan Huffman. Uh, number 60, Casey Reitz. Rice Reitz. Uh, 65, Daniel Wood. Who do I miss? Brandon McClary. Brandon McClary. 57. 57. I mean, I only make a lot of noise because these are sophomores and juniors. One sophomore, One sophomore, sophomore four juniors. and four juniors. I mean, how big is that going to be oh, it's huge. as they continue to blend? It's huge. And, and, and you know, and they they jail well as a unit. They, 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 they're they in each other's hip pocket all the time. Holding each other accountable. Um, you know, during the day, they're all of them are great students. They do a great job in the classroom. They're, they're model citizens in our school. And, uh, you know, they, they exist exhibit the behaviors on and off the field that we want all our players to exhibit and and then just highlighting them there there are plenty of others who do right but you know if you want to talk about one unit uh, you want to talk about a position group right across the board spot for spot mm -hmm. those guys are hands down uh, they, they are they are a tight knit unit yeah, and I bring it up and I nicknamed them the big ugly uglies because there's nothing glamorous about what they do down the this weekend, you'll watch college and NFL football. No reporter is running to say, oh, let me find the offensive lineman so I can talk to him. So you got to give credit where credit is due, and these guys got it in big numbers. Well, you know, they're, they're a big reason for Jacob rushing's yards. No question. Jacob, Jacob is the first one to acknowledge that. Yes. And, uh, you know, they 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 know. They, they yeah. know they're not going to hear their name called out over the right. loudspeaker, right. and, and, and they know that they're, you know, they're they're in the trenches and they got to they got to get what they can get and they enjoy being in those trenches and doing what they do and they enjoy doing it together. So I just got to give them a shout out because they don't get the notes. No, they don't. Um, Jacob Rushton working on his second thousand yard season. So that's that's a goal obviously that they had in mind. He had over 1,100 yards last year due to these same guys. Uh, so it was a great thing, Coach. I got to find my list so we can talk about the the Bucks in college. We're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna talk a little bit about recruiting. Some of the questions that college coaches ask you as they come into Hope County. We'll be right back.